Okay, so now we've looked at some of the coaching overview. And I've given you a number of tools that you can actually use as you coach other people. We're going to come back to coaching and we'll sort of jump in between as we move ahead now with the NLP section. Every now and then I'll refer back to the coaching and show you how you're able to use a number of the techniques and skills that we'll learn within NLP within your coaching practice as well. So first of all, let's turn to page 51 and actually just see what is NLP then. So on page 51, we've got the definition of NLP. Now this is your very standard generic definition of NLP. And so it says there, Nero, which is the nervous system or the mind, through which our experience is processed via our five senses. So really it's how we take in information through VACOG. And that simply means how we take in information through our visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory and gustatory. So through our senses. Then we've got linguistic. And so this is the language and other nonverbal communication systems through which our neural representations are coded, ordered and given meaning. And this includes the six things then that we do inside our heads. We create pictures, sounds, feelings, tastes, smells, and we also talk to ourselves. So the self-talk. What this is, this is how we communicate and interpret this experience. And it also includes our body language. Then the programming is the ability to discover and to utilize the programs that we run. And so this is our communication with ourselves and others. In our neurological systems to achieve our specific and our desired outcomes. So think of it almost like a, a program on your computer or app on your tablet. It's the actual program that's running to produce the outcome that we want. Now, Bandler said, NLP is an attitude and a methodology that leaves behind a trail of techniques. And what does that mean? Well, if you look on page 52 at the history of NLP, on the left-hand side, in the middle, you'll see Bandler. He was into computers and maths. And John Grinder was actually a linguistics professor. Now, Bandler was a student at, univers at the University of California in Santa Cruz. And he was transcribing some books by Fritz Perls and Virginia Satir. And so you'll notice Fritz Perls in the bottom of the page on the left hand side. Fritz Perls was actually the creator of Gestalt therapy. And Bandler thought, you know, as he was busy uh, transcribing these books, he thought, you know what, he's going to try do this Gestalt for himself. And he actually found that he was really good at it. So he found he was actually good at modeling. And when we talk about modeling in NLP, we mean being able to look across at somebody else. How are they getting these phenomenal results that they are? And how do I learn to be able to do that myself in much less time? So in other words, looking across how somebody else doing what they're doing, and then I'm able to do that in much less time than it actually took them to learn how to do it in the first place. And so originally, it actually started out with Bandler, Grendo, who was the linguistics professor, and actually another gentleman by the name of Persilek. And they originally sort of kicked off this idea of NLP. Now, there's a number of people that were notable along the journey and a number of inspirations for NLP. Like I said, probably the, the, some of the major people who were modeled there was Fritz Pilz. Then just next to Fritz Pearls was a lady by the name of Virginia Satir. And she was a renowned family therapist. And she got one of the things that she did, she got phenomenal results with her clients by getting really specific in the problems or getting to the deep structure of what they were saying the problem was. And so as Bandler and Grinder modeled her, they went out to create the meta model. So if we look in the middle of the page on the left hand side next to Bandler and Grinder, they created the meta model and they wrote the book Structure of Magic 1 and 2. Now, they then heard about this other gentleman who was getting phenomenal results with his clients. And they thought, okay, well, you know, let's go and see because Virginia Satir was getting these great results by getting very specific. 
So let's go and see if this is the exact same thing that Ericsson was doing. And so Milton Ericsson, top of the page near the left hand side, he was a, a, a doctor, but he was also a phenomenal hypnotherapist. In fact, he practiced hypnosis for around 60 years from 1920 to 1980. And he was getting results by being totally the opposite to Virginia Satir. So where she was getting really specific and chunking down, Erickson was, he was using hypnotic language patterns. He was being artfully vague. And after modeling him, they actually created the Milton model patterns, which we'll be learning about later. And they wrote the books Patterns 1 and 2. Now, there's a number of other things. We sort of look in the middle of the, the page there. So after hypnotic language patterns, they went off to create eye patterns. Then we've got strategies. Then we've got reframing. And there's a number of books, actually, that they wrote there as well. So we've got patterns one and two, frogs into princes, NLP volume one, reframing. These are just some of the NLP books uh, that have been created, obviously many more since. Uh, this timeline pretty much stretches from around 1975 to 88 on the right hand side where we see uh, Tad James and Wyatt Woodsmore and they wrote the book Timeline Therapy and the Basis of Personality. Now Timeline Therapy uh, is a wonderful set of techniques. In fact, there's also a few different terminologies or a few different ways in describing working with a timeline. But Tad James went off to, to trademark the name Timeline Therapy. So a few other people that were important there. Back on the left-hand side, we got called Alfred Korzybski in the top left-hand side. And he wrote a book called uh, Science and Sanity in 1933, which was a general semantics book. We've got uh, Paul Vatslavik, uh, who was into linguistics. We got down the bottom left hand side Gregory Bateson and Haley and this is where we get a lot of ideas about ecology and we'll talk about ecology a lot uh, as we go through the training. I think it's really important to always consider what are the consequences or what's the impact on not only just the client, so the client, their family, society and really the planet and the overall system. So we never want to have any negative consequences or negative ecology. As you move across to the right hand side, we're going to be learning about representational systems around, oh, then we've got uh, metaprograms. Metaprograms actually weren't originally part of the NLP training. They were added later. Uh, metaprograms actually something we do during the master practitioner training. Uh, as well as sleight of mouth. Sleight of mouth has a wonderful set of reframes, about 16 different types of reframes. And uh, again, that's something we discussed during the uh, the master practitioner training. So there's a number of books there, as we said. And, you know, all, all this shows us, of course, across the top middle as well. Sorry, we've got Pavlov. And I don't know if you've heard of Pavlov's dogs. And Pavlov was, this is where we get a lot of our ideas about anchoring. And of course, we'll be talking about anchoring during the training as well. So this just gives us a, a short history of NLP, only from 75 to 88. And this goes to show that actually, for the most part, all of NLP was actually created through modeling. And that, that's really the power of NLP. You know, so to come back to what Richard Bandler said, NLP is an attitude and a methodology that leaves behind a trail of techniques. And it's the study of our subjective experience and how that affects our behavior. Now, we're going to see as we look at the NLP, NLP communication model shortly, we'll talk about this a little more. I love this. NLP is a realization that our words do not describe the world that we live in, but rather determine the world that we live in. Alfred Korzybski wrote in Science and Sanity, and he said, Almost all psychological problems is because of a person's inability to traverse logical levels. And he also spoke about the map is not the territory. 
And so we'll talk about this a number of times as well. And the theory is that the map is just a representation of our experience. You know, just like when you go to a restaurant, the menu itself is not the meal. And so the map is not the territory. And this information that we get in, we typically we're going to try and describe that with our language. And the problem is that if we consider the amount of words that are available to us and the amount of words that we actually use, we can't actually describe the experience that we are experiencing or what we are having going on inside ourselves. And so the words then that we use actually don't describe the world. They determine the world that we live in. And so Tad James said, NLP is how we use the language of the mind to consistently achieve our specific and our desired outcomes. And Grinder said, the study of excellence and how to reproduce it. So those are just some definitions or some takes on what NLP is. And I think they all describe them pretty well. We'll look by the end of the training and you can then come up with your definition of NLP. You know, what, is it, what does NLP actually mean to you? And of course, you know, you can use NLP in many, many different ways. Uh, in fact, NLP forms the basis of many trainings. And it, you can assist clients in finding out what it is that they want, uh, help boost self-worth, self-esteem, communicate more effectively, boosting performance, helping control your thoughts and feelings or the client's thoughts and feelings. You can work with limiting beliefs, values, personality types. In business, you can use it for sales, negotiation, meetings, uh, presentations, trainings. You can use it in health and weight loss, smoking, addictions, phobia cure, anxiety, uh, medical conditions, counseling, hypnosis, psychotherapy, communication, self-expression, love problems, problem solving, achieving goals, coaching, of course, uh, in sports, you know, getting greater performance, image training, mental support, in education, effective studying methods and learning better studying techniques and strategies, learning strategies, spelling strategies, ex get rid of exam anxiety. So, you know, you can use NLP in so, so, so many different ways. And uh, that's the beauty of NLP. You know, and there's, I think as the field grows, there are more techniques coming to the forefront. And although all of the NLP trainings have the same core fundamentals, I think as the field grows, there'll be more techniques that come to the forefront and you know, where we can model, and in fact, I love modeling other people, you know, one thing to notice, if you are going to model somebody, model excellence, and if you can model somebody else who's excellent in what they do, and you can learn how to do that as well, well then of course, you can become excellent in all the different things that you want to become excellent in, and so I've modeled a few different people for, for various different things, and, uh, you know, we talk about modeling uh, during master practitioner training. We actually do a modeling exercise as well. So, yeah, just a brief history on NLP, its roots, some history about uh, where it's come from, and, you know, some of the things that you can use NLP for.